Hello everyone. I want to go over something that we did a couple weeks ago, uh, but now it's going to become relevant again. So we were talking about the MEL spectrograms, which of course you know because you've used this in the BEAT tracking assignment as well. But I want to look again at this filter bank and then in a moment I'll look at another filter bank as well. And I want to focus on actually sonifying the result of applying this filter bank so we can hear what information we've preserved. And so what we're going to do moving forward is try to capture different aspects of what we perceive in the music. So with the male spectrograms, what we're really capturing is timbre, as we'll see. And then we're going to have another feature called chroma, which picks up on the notes. And somehow together, those will give us good descriptors of things that are happening in the music um, without too many numbers, okay? So we're trying to get away without using so many numbers to summarize each window. All right, so if I go ahead and I load in some stuff here. So here's my MEL spectrogram, which you should be familiar with this by now, but, but these are these overlapping triangular windows. And if I stack them up into the rows of a matrix, so each triangle window is a different row, and then I multiply the spectrogram on the left by that matrix, what it's going to do is take the dot product of every triangle window with every column of the spectrogram, and that will give you one row of the male spectrogram. And you can view this as saying, all right, I'm going to basically take the spectrogram and stretch it out and resample it. Um, I'm not going to use as many bins or, or frequency samples at the higher frequencies as I am at, at the lower frequencies. So notice that these higher triangle filters are wider. So a single number that I get actually covers like a few hundred hertz up here. Whereas down here, a single number that we get from doing the dot product with one of those triangular windows may, may only cover a few hertz. So we place more importance on the lower frequencies. We give them more numbers, and that's because we can actually tell the difference down there, whereas we can't tell the difference up high as much. So this, this somehow is a better representation of the spectrogram for what we can actually hear. It wasn't really worth it to store all those numbers up there if we couldn't hear them anyway. So, but then just looking at the results, you can see it's a warped version of the spectrogram here. So it's like I took that spectrogram and I kind of stretched it out appropriately. So, so I really stretched the, the lower frequencies out. And then I kind of compressed the higher frequencies a little bit. And actually, I didn't even go up beyond. So in this particular male filter bank, I only took up to 16,000 hertz. So I didn't even go all the way up to the Nyquist rate. Um, there are some frequencies that I'm not even covering up top. You wouldn't hear them anyway, and they're, they're not really going to help us with the kind of analysis that we're doing. Okay, but now, so, so one thing we can do that's a bit interesting is, as I said, try to sonify this. And listen to what, what is it that we preserved here. And so what you can do, actually, is take the MEL spectrogram, and multiply that on the left by the transpose of the male filter bank. So remember, the transpose is, is flipping the rows from the columns. So if I look at the dimensions here, if, if I switch this around and then I have uh, 1025 rows and 200 columns, then I can do a multiplication with this. I'll end up with a 1025 by 859 matrix, and, and actually that can be viewed as, as taking all of the points in the male spectrogram multiplying the triangular windows by each of those and then superimposing those those windows back on top. But So it's a way of going back from the MEL spectrogram to the spectrogram, roughly, not exactly, but it's approximation of that. And so I'm going to do that and I'm going to take care of like, you know, the mirror symmetry kind of stuff, um, like you, you did in the sound images in, in homework three. But basically I'm just going to somehow go back from this to the spectrogram. So let's have a look at that. Oops, I should run this, this cell first. All right. So here is the original spectrogram on the left, and here is the result of doing that kind of inverse. 
So the original clip sounds like, well, let's listen. So the original clip was, I called it X. So let's just listen to that real quick. Okay, so now let's hear what, what actually got preserved there. So one thing I actually forgot to mention is um, to get this back to a sound, I was, uh, you could do Griffin limb, because so, this is a magnitude only representation. So when I go back to a spectrogram, I only have magnitudes, but I actually found it sounded a little bit better if I added random phases for some reason. So that's what I did. But anyway, what you hear is, is we basically preserved all the sound with only 200 numbers. Now it's definitely degraded, but you can hear, you can actually resolve the individual notes still. Um, and you can definitely hear the beats and, and the instruments and the voice and all that. Now what happens if I dial this down a little bit? So what if I instead um, use a lower resolution? So let's say I maybe I only use you know 40 bins in the male spectrogram. So I'm only going to use 40 numbers, only 40 windows instead of only 40 um, triangle filters in the filter bank instead of 200. So I'm going to compress this by a further factor of 5. Actually, I can keep all of that there. OK. Um, and I think that's good. So let's go ahead and look at that. Oh, and of course, yeah, now I want to say my, my number of bins, I'm going to make this only 40. OK, so I can see in the picture not quite as much detail there. Um, let me actually, just to make this really clear, let me show the actual picture, sorry, pixels there. There we go. Okay. So that's the information I actually preserve. You can see there's just not nearly as many bins. So then the question is, what does that sound like? So let's listen. Okay. So when I invert it, here's what I see, and, and here's what I hear. You can just barely hear a couple of notes, but what's happened is um, we have lost some of the information about the individual notes here. You notice that that the the resolution of these of these horizontal lines where the harmonic details are is not quite what it was before. <clears throat> so with only 40 numbers, we're not really preserving the notes as much. Um, let's let's to go even further, and let's say we only use 20 bins in the in the Mel spectrogram. So I'll go ahead and make that 20. And so when I invert that, I should see even less detail in the harmonics. I can definitely still see the beats, though. I can still see the vertical lines. But, but these individual notes in the harmonics have gotten kind of blurred out. I may be able to tell that a note is happening, but I won't be able to, I don't have the resolution anymore to say what note it is. So I don't know about you, but I, I can't actually even hear the individual notes anymore. It sounds, and even even the voice, it sounds like a robot voice. It's not really, or like wind is carrying the voice, I guess because of the noise partially. But yeah, you, you can't make out the individual notes anymore. That information has been lost. But I can tell that there are drums happening. I can tell when the beats are, and I can actually hear what the words are. So originally this, this, this representation was designed to pick up on phonemes in voice. And so it makes sense that we can actually still hear the um, vocals. So I can very clearly clear, I can very clearly hear that he's saying this is what it sounds like when doves cry. Um, even though it sounds like a weird voice, kind of creepy. But yeah, and that's that's kind of amazing because because here I'm only using 20 numbers, 
whereas the, the short time Fourier transform that I was using um, had a window length of, of 2048, so, so actually over a thousand non-redundant numbers. So this is a compression factor of, of 50 times, actually. So with 2% of the information that I had before, um, I'm able to, to still make out the vocals. That's pretty cool. And the other thing, you know, yes, it's true that things are blurred, but also the noise, any, any noise that happened or any variations that, that maybe distract from what I'm trying to get at are also smoothed away. So in some ways, it's, it's not just a bug that we lost information, but, but perhaps a feature. We're, we're retaining the, the information, we're filtering out the information that actually matters when it comes to timbre. Okay, so that was just one thing I wanted to talk about, and I'll continue on and say how we, we crunch this even further.